Hi, welcome to Success Wealth. Today we're going to be reviewing the Federal Budget 2020. I'm here with the busiest person I know. She's a mum, she's an entrepreneur, an investor, and the founder of Success Accounting Group. With her knowledge, she will literally be showing you how to get out of this pandemic and winning. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you back to the show, Miss Lan Yuan. Hello, Phil, and ha hello, community, and, and all the viewers here. Fantastic. So much has happened in the last few weeks, Lan. It's incredible. Absolutely. And I think it's a it's a great time now to, for business owners to start um, looking at, uh, you know, the next steps after the budget's release. For sure, for sure. But Lan, you described yourself as on a mission to help entrepreneurs. Can you tell me more about your mission and why entrepreneurs? Yes. Um, We've always, um, you know, our, our tagline and our, our mission was always to help businesses grow and build wealth. And that, that arose from our, um, you know, in, in our my accounting days, especially this pandemic, we found that those who don't plan ahead are at the mercy of our government. So as you can see, there are the majority are waiting, you know, still in Victoria in, for restrictions to lift up. But there are also a small number of percentage of entrepreneurs that have pivot. And they are the ones that will, will do well in this recovery led budget. So that's why in my business model, Wealth Entrepreneurs, we believe in, and we're on a mission that if you don't get serious about your wealth now, you'll never have serious wealth. So I believe that now is the time to pivot and we will show you some of the tools in this show later on. Fantastic. And I think there's no true time uh, for that statement to be true. You have to get serious, everybody, if you really want to succeed. Now, there's a lot to go through, so let's get into it. So federal budget, uh, what we're going to go through is just what we're going to go through today is the federal budget updates, um, just an overview, looking at the winners and losers. We're going to talk about how the budget has influence on individuals and then as business owners, and we're all business owners here, a lot of us are. And furthermore, Lance going to take us on a deep dive into your business in terms of to identify what type of business you are and then what you can do and how this budget can work for you. So really looking forward to it. Okay. So let's go. First of all, the overview. So Federal Treasurer Josh Frydenberg, in his words, says that the Morris government has provided unprecedented support, saving lives, cushioning the blow, and helping Australians remain in work. Our measures were temporary, were targeted, and were proportionate. We know that there's lots of opinions around that at the moment, but our main focus is to understand what that all means and how it can help you. This is our this is the purpose of today's show is how it can help you and your business. Okay, so with the pandemic, this was the government's response. Okay, JobKeeper was a $101 billion economic lifeline that today supports over three and a half million Australians. The cash flow boost has already provided $28 billion, helping around 800,000 small and medium sized businesses stay afloat. JobSeeker doubled the safety net and two 750 payments went to millions of pensioners, carers, others in income support. So together, these actions, the government believes has saved over 700 jobs. And they, they said that they were able to do all this during this crisis because they had a strong budget and they brought the balance back for the first time in 11 years. And they were able to maintain Australia's AAA credit rating internationally. But the treasurer then acknowledged though, this all was not without a significant cost. What he calls our economic response came at significant cost. So it's an acknowledgement there. Let's have a look at what that actually means in terms of cost. For COVID-19, our deficit reached $213.7 billion. This year falling to $66.9 billion by 2023-24. The net debt will increase from $703 billion or 36% of our GDP this year and will peak to $966 billion or 44% of GDP by 2024. So this is a heavy burden, but necessary, but a necessary one to responsibly deal with the greatest challenge of our time. So Lan, do you see this as the greatest challenge of our time? Oh look, certainly in my time <laughs> so far. <laughs> um, and I think the reason why that has been it's a global challenge, isn't it? It's no it's not just isolated in Australia but it has affected every country. I don't think any country is, is uh, left out. And because of that, it's not just a, uh, a financial one uh, challenge, but it's also a health challenge. So that makes it a double whammy for entrepreneurs and households to, to recover. 
but there are winners in this pandemic and this budget. We're going to cover that um, right now, if you may. So the, the winners clearly will be illustrated later on these taxpayers, young people, construction workers, and those are the ones, and, and tourism, uh, these are the ones that get stimulus support. And obviously businesses is, is, uh, is, is the big one. So the as you, you mentioned, Phil, the government is all focused on business. They believe the business and the entrepreneurs are our our bloodline to the recovery. Other areas are regional Australia, manufacturing, you know, if subject to uh, the vaccine coming out next next year as well, these are the areas that are winners. Maybe you cover some of the losers, uh, Phil. <laughs> so the losers, they, look, uh, budget can't, can't include everything and cover everybody. So we see the losers as being refugees and immigration. Those numbers are looking, they have dropped, they will drop these years and they'll continue to be low next year. But there is a plan to uh, that the government's putting in to raise those numbers back up because they're such a vital part of the economy and boosting our um, our numbers. So the job seeker, if you're on that, the job seeker program will be will reduce over time and then we'll, we'll stop once economic activity comes back to the right levels. The economy itself, like we saw before, it's going to go into massive debt, but it's for a reason. There wasn't too much in the budget covering important things like childcare, climate, and the other thing was women. Women were disproportionately affected during this pandemic, but there was nothing too specific that supported the, the, the women's movement. You know, if you were structurally uh, un became unemployed as a woman, there's nothing in there specifically that helps you any further than um, any other demographic or segment. So there's some of the losers, but I guess it's all about what's going to happen next. So let's focus on the plan. So this is what the government says, okay? In their words, our plan is to grow the economy. Our plan is to create jobs. Our plan will guarantee the essential services that Australians rely on and we'll do this without increasing taxes. So I think you're going to show us what that all means coming up very soon, Lance, so that'll be great. And the government also says there is no economic recovery without a jobs recovery. There is no budget recovery without a jobs recovery. So this budget is all about jobs. So I see that as a real positive for business owners because in order to have the jobs, you got to have a thriving business. So let's see what the government's done and you'll break it down for us, Lan, on how we can um, implement these strategies to help our business to create those jobs. I will start with the household individual first Fantastic. because there are big cuts in taxes brought forward from 1 July 2020 and that signals about $50 billion of tax cuts from the government. If you're working at the moment, you need to know that you can expect in the next few weeks uh, some extra extra salary in your pay because it's going to be backdated for 1 July, as I said, 2020. And first, you receive an offset, a lump sum after July uh, in your 2021 refund. Okay. Part two is an immediate reduction in the tax taken from your wages. So legislation has passed. And therefore, your employer will should need to adjust this um, tax rate so that you'll, you'll find that you'll get extra pay in your every fortnight or monthly. So if we look at the table here at the bottom, you can also measure what, how much um, extra income in your pocket that you will be receiving. So if you are on a, let's say, a $60,000 salary, you'll get an extra uh, $1,080 approximately. And you can see that as you make more money in salary, then you'll get more. So 200,000 is 2,430. So all this, we call it helicopter money, extra money. The government's goal is to encourage people to spend. So spend, spend out of the out of way back to recovery. So let's, um, that's so, the so goal. How does, how does spending directly relate to more jobs? Uh, can you fill that gap a little bit? Like yeah, so this is the government's view that if you have more, if, if everyone has a little bit more cash flow and they go out and buy goods and go to restaurants, eat out, buy more entertainment, that brings more business to business owners and therefore they will be more in the demand and need to hire more people, increase in jobs. Therefore, it, it's a cycle. So it leads to more jobs and then more people get employed and therefore those people who are employed then can buy houses and, and, and then the cycle continues. So it is it is the hope that, that people will use, the velocity of money will be spent in the economy and not just saved. Mm -hmm. But that's that's on a big assumption that, that people do spend and not just pay down debt on, on the tax that they re receive extra. So let's see how it goes because it is just introduced. We'll see and we'll review in, in the next few months if that is in fact their goal is achieved. So what do you think the um, the tax cut goals are actually the government wants to achieve with that? So they did say their goals for tax cuts is that 
um, out of all the tax cuts, 11 million taxpayers will get a tax cut and the GDP will get a boost of $3.5 billion in 21 alone and then three times, $9 billion in 22. Now that's a massive injection to our economy. We did have a deficit in the last quarter, but with this extra helicopter money that encouraging to spend, that will naturally, if it gets spent, we'll estimate to inject that GDP in those numbers. And finally, as I explained, with this injection of extra money in the economy, the extra demand leading to more jobs being created. By 2022, they expect 50,000 jobs. So let's hope that their, their goal is achieved because I guess it is time for the economy engine of our, our country to be reunited. So I hope that this budget is aimed at that, but now it's the people now. The people need to take action for it to come to, to reality. Yep, 50,000 jobs means that there's some businesses doing well. <laughs> that's 50,000 extra jobs. Oh, that's, that's right. Fantastic. So with, as an employee, we all know about super. I think there's some changes in the super area to make things simpler. Can you talk us through that as well? Yes, yes. The government did mention that uh, the, the stapling of accounts super. So when you change jobs, because there will be more jobs and people changing jobs because people have been stood down and, and then will find new jobs. New super accounts will no longer be automatically created every time someone starts a new job. And also the government is putting performance benchmarks on all industry super funds so, so that your retirement money that you're, you're putting in SGC, 9.5%, gets um, invested properly in those funds that have passed the performance. So that's a that's a win for, for employees. Yeah, it's never been done before, for, for the way I understand it. No, to, to it's have... never been done, and frankly, it's a, I think I like over $3 trillion in yeah. super fund money of, mm. of, of people that is being looked after by, uh, I guess, uh, industry funds that haven't been really monitored their performance. So yeah, exactly. now the government's that... stepping in. So that's, it's, it's, it's overdue. About time. I think it's overdue. It's about time, absolutely, because yeah. you know they could they could lose your money and have no accountability and no recourse at all. So this this is fantastic for people. That's right. So it's a, it's a good measure to to introduce now. Yeah, that's great. Now there is a little bit on capital gains tax that the government's actually throwing in there as well. Probably not so much for Victorians because granny flats aren't a big thing in Victoria because of our building laws. It's definitely in other states. Can you talk that a little bit more? Yeah. So. New South Wales is the capital of granny flats. Um, so if, you're a, if you if you have a granny flat that you rent out at the moment and your backyard, then this is something that is a win for you guys. Um, Victoria, I don't, our laws don't allow granny flats that easily, so we don't have many granny flats. But the budget has now included to remove capital gain tax if you sell your family home and if you entered in a formal granny flat arrangement with a, a, a parent or a relative. So if you sold your home with a granny flat, obviously you most likely get more capital gains because the granny, especially if you if you rented granny flat, but now the budget allows you to sell the whole lot tax-free. So that's a small win for investors in New South Wales. So to note uh, when, when they do that. So anyway, we, we can keep some money in our pocket. It's a good thing. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So that's a summary on the individuals. I'll go to the business entrepreneurs now. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, whether you run trading in a business or if, you, if you're an entrepreneur as an investor, this is the section that I encourage you to take note on. Entrepreneurs have the two biggest measures that I think is most important. That's the tax loss carry back and also the immediate deduction. I'm gonna cover the tax loss carry back now. Now this is for specifically for companies with turnovers of under $5 billion. Yeah, and I then that's most of us. <laughs> yeah, five billion. I, I think that's most of us at all um, 99%. And we'll be able to carry back losses from mm -hmm. the financial year 20, 21, mm -hmm. and 22. Income used to offset previously tax profits in financial year 19, financial year 20, and financial year 21, okay? So there's a three year window of tax planning here. This will give you a tax refund available out of the tax that you already paid as profits, going back to the, the three years I mentioned, so 19, 20, 21. So certainly you have at least six months to do really early tax planning to, to maximize your cash flow in your business. As I said, sole traders and partnerships miss out. So mm -hmm. if you're still operating as a sole trader or partnership, now's the time to restructure because it, there's little benefit in tax and no benefit in so, uh, asset protection in those structures anyway. If you're running as a trust, you still won't be able to access this benefit, but there are very flexible ways to minimize tax in the trust. And you need to speak to your accountant about that. So, I just so want- to... Just some clarity there, just around, so for up to 21, 20 and 21, if you are making profit, you can still claim that back even in 21, 22. 
Is that right? You, yes. And you, if so you, for whatever reason you do make a loss, you can still claim. So you've got three years of being able to claim, claim things back, claim, claim the tax back. Yeah. So just, just remember the three year window. So the tax mm -hmm. profits in 19 financial year, 20 yeah. financial year, and this financial year, 21. So there's a lot of room to maximize, uh, take advantage of this uh, tax loss carry back. I'll go for an example so that people un uh, understand the concept. So folks, if you had a, del a company, let's say a development company, and you made a net profit of 100,000 in 2019. Mm -hmm. Now, assuming you, you're a small business, and so the tax will be about 26,000 um, in 19. Actually, it should be 27,500 because the tax rate only changed this year in 20 year um, to 26 percent but it doesn't matter so you understand the concept that you you, you paid some tax yep. in, in that 19 year so in the 20 year you made a loss of 100k because you're in, under lockdown and you made no money so you made a loss so effectively you can claim the back the tax losses to offset the 2019 and get a refund of cash 26,000 doesn't make oh, sense wow. so, so if business was booming back in 19 you were rock and rolling you, you did your taxes, you paid your taxes, and then this year you got shut down. You're operating at a, a, a small fraction of what you were before. So it's a big loss. So you can actually get the tax back from what you already paid last year when things were booming. That's right. That's right. So this is really beneficial for any entrepreneurs who operate their business as a trading business or an investment business. So if you had a cryptocurrency company or a property development company or a shares portfolio and you had past profits, then this is the great way to get more cash flow back into your business and then you reinvest that to, to grow your business or invest more. And we can forward plan as well, knowing that we've got this three year window and see what, what the best way to handle it. That's exciting. Absolutely. <laughs> and 21 hasn't finished, if you realize. So yep. remember, we're only in October. So you really had a good another seven to eight months to start up you know, a company and effectively uh, maximize this carry back loss. So if you, it's not too late. That's, that's what I love about this budget. It's not all about cutoff dates. You actually can mm -hmm. you still have time to maximize the tax carry back loss if you get started now. And that's the important thing. You've got to get that plan together. Absolutely right. I'm going to cover immediate asset right off now because mm -hmm. this is something that I think is should be worked with the tax carry back loss. Yep. This strategy, I've already helping our businesses that are trading well and also um, break even to maximize. So the concept is,